Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. Not only have I been the owner of Mint Mobile for the last few years, I've also been a customer. I don't know if you knew this, but anyone can get the same premium wireless for $15 a month plan that I've been enjoying. It's not just for celebrities, so do like I did and have one of your assistant's assistants switch you to Mint Mobile today. I'm told it's super easy to do at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little... Or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the Internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile, with a message for everyone paying big wireless way too much. Please, for the love of everything good in this world, stop. With Mint, you can get premium wireless for just $15 a month. Of course, if you enjoy overpaying, no judgments, but that's weird. Okay, one judgment. Anyway, give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at hm.com. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the Internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. Not only have I been the owner of Mint Mobile for the last few years, I've also been a customer. I don't know if you knew this, but anyone can get the same premium wireless for $15 a month plan that I've been enjoying. It's not just for celebrities, so do like I did and have one of your assistant's assistants switch you to Mint Mobile today. I'm told it's super easy to do at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile, with a message for everyone paying big wireless way too much. Please, for the love of everything good in this world, stop. With Mint, you can get premium wireless for just $15 a month. Of course, if you enjoy overpaying, no judgments, but that's weird. Okay, one judgment. Anyway, give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. How has this impacted you and the way you argue? Aha, we're getting to it. We're getting to it. Now you're going to gener- you're going to come up with this general understanding of maybe why when you guys have arguments, you go to hurt one another. Hey girl, imagine a life where you feel supported, connected and understood. I get it. Being a mom is hard, especially when you're spinning so many plates. We exhaust ourselves trying to create the perfect life for our family. You deserve to enjoy your family without the stress perfectionism brings. 
On this podcast, I provide practical and relatable life experiences. I teach women quick and easy to use strategies to help them reclaim their identity, reignite their marriage, and enjoy their children. If you're ready to be challenged, then pull up a chair, grab pen and paper, because it's about to go down. I'm Veronica Cisneros, a licensed marriage and family therapist, and this is the Empowered and Unapologetic Podcast. Hey, Veronica, I was listening to your podcast just now and felt perhaps you can help me. I have a fear of talking about matters to my husband. I guess because of this, I resent him a lot, and I feel like leaving him sometimes. Talking to him about matters always leads to disagreements and yelling, and I can't stand the yelling. It makes me emotional, and I just go silent automatically. I guess my question is, how do you have an argument with your husband without hurting one another? Mama, I'm here to tell you that you are not the only one. You are totally not the only one. And I can understand why you guys both might go for the jugular. A good reason we go for the jugular is because at that time, at that moment, we feel as if we're not being understood. We feel as if we're not being heard. We feel hurt. We feel overwhelmed and probably even flooded with emotions. And when we're in this mode of what we call flooding, we don't know what to do. We don't know what to do at all. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down flooding. And so the, the clinical term is called physiological flooding. And it's when you're completely overwhelmed with emotions, your thoughts, and your physical sensations. Let me break it down for you. When you're in the middle of an argument, I want you to take a moment and think about what you're thinking. What are the stories you built up in your head? He's always going to be like this. He's always going to be like this. No matter what I say, no matter what I do, he's just going to attack me. And then our kids are going to watch this. And our kids are going to eventually argue the way he argues. Or even worse, my daughters are going to be treated the same way because they don't know how to defend themselves. They're going to be watching mommy stay completely quiet and shut down and not do anything. My daughters are going to repeat the same habits. Oh, hell no. Or even worse, my son, my son is going to do the same thing that my husband's doing because, duh, he learned it from his dad. We go into building all of these, all of these stories. In addition to that, our emotions are going off the charts, off the charts. So what's probably happening for you is you're probably feeling resentment. You're probably feeling hurt. You're probably feeling rejected, misunderstood disrespected, you're probably feeling disgusted because you can't seem, you feel like you can't seem to carry on a conversation without hurting the other person, you probably want revenge. You're not the only one, right? You're probably so overwhelmed with frustration and you're so tired of being the one that keeps everything at bay You're probably at this point where you just can't take it anymore. And so you either curse or yell or even worse, you say something that will hurt him. And it's not like we do this on purpose. It's just we don't know what to do when we're in that flooded. We can't think straight. Our emotions are overwhelming us. And then what's worse, our body's reaction. What is happening in your body physically? You might feel tight and tense. You might feel like your heart is racing 50,000 miles per hour, right? Per minute, I should say. Even more, you might feel like your heart is about to just pop out of your chest because it's going so fast, right? You don't know what to do with all of these things. You're so full of stress. You're so overwhelmed. You don't know what to do. So hurting the other person, hurting your partner ends up being the thing to do. What ends up happening is resentment builds. Resentment builds, frustration builds, and you slowly start to disconnect. So we're going to do a little bit of an exercise. I want to find out what happens for you in flooding. What does flooding look like? 
And I want you to take some time to really, really write this down. Physiological flooding. What happens to you when you're in flooding? What happens? Where do you go? Where do you go with your thoughts? Do you go into storytelling? Do you go into... Um, Do you go into all of the worst things that can happen? Think about flooding as your body's alarm system. And what's happening is you go into this fight or flight mode, right? Because your adrenaline is next level. And you feel as if you're about to be harmed. And you might be right because of the dance that you and your partner do, right? And so when you're in flooding, I want you to pay attention to what happens. Your heart rate is elevated, right? And so when your heart rate is elevated, even if you feel like, no, dude, I'm good. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're lying to yourself. You cannot process social interaction. It is very hard for you to problem solve during these moments. There's actually an exercise I do with most of my couples. I'll ask them, what does it look like when you're in flooding? Because when you're in flooding, your heart rate is about 100 beats per minute, especially in a relationship a relationship setting. This is called flooding, okay? You're not paying attention. You're allowing your emotions to take, take over. So flooding leads to hurt feelings. It leads to you saying something that you can't take back. So grab a pen and paper. We're about to do some work. So what happens when you're in flooding? Where do your thoughts go? And I really want you to pay attention to it. Where do your thoughts go? Do you go into story time? Do you go into catastrophizing? Do you all of a sudden, all of a sudden you have this gift of mind reading of what he's going to do and what he's going to say next? Where do you go? Do you go into fortune telling, catastrophizing, mind reading? Do you go into this black and white thinking using the words always and never? What happens to you? Once you've been able to identify your thoughts, the next step, I want you to identify your emotions. Where are your emotions taking you? What are you experiencing in this time? Are you feeling completely dismissed? Are you feeling rejected? Are you feeling shocked? Are you feeling isolated, victimized, empty, disappointed, embarrassed? Am I getting warm? Are you feeling revolted, hesitant, withdrawn, annoyed, provoked, jealous, furious, violated, ridiculed, disrespected, resentful? Are you feeling exposed, nervous, insignificant, worthless, inferior, inadequate, worried, frightened, helpless? I want you to identify what is happening for you emotionally. Now I want you to look at what's happening in your body. We already know that if you're in flooding... We know that your heart rate is at the next degree, right? We know that. But what is also happening happening to you? Are you tight, tense? Do you feel knots, sore, achy, pressure? Do you feel trembling, shaky, short of breath? This is your physical sensations. Do you feel prickly, tingly, burning, itchy, pounding. This is where I want you to go. I want you to know what's happening. Constricted, choking, suffocated, imploding, rigid, drained, heavy, disconnected, hollow, empty. This is what's happening to your body. This is how you know you're in flooding because your body is reacting to what's happening for you. And so we want to get an idea of what happens in our body when we're in flooding. Because most of the time, we tend to personalize what the other person is saying and how the other person reacts. And so what I want you to do is, I want you to identify where you're going story-wise. 
What are stories you tell yourself? What is happening for you emotionally? I gave you a whole list of emotions. And then also, lastly, I, I also want you to identify what is happening to your body, your physical sensations. I want you to become familiar of what flooding looks like. Psychologist Dr. John Gottman explains that this emotional hijacking is the hallmark of our nervous system in overdrive. Something happens in your interaction with your partner that sets off your internal threat detection system. This is our sympathetic nervous system in action, preparing you for a battle or a fight. I'm sorry, or flight. Again, that fight or flight response. And so when we're in flooding, yeah, you're going to say things you don't mean. You're personalizing. You are completely driven by this fight or flight response. So once you've been able to identify what happens to you, I want you to have a conversation with your partner about the same thing. I want you to ask them. I want you to sit down and ask them what happens to them when they're at their wit's end, when they are flooded with emotions, when they are flooded by thoughts. And I want you to do this without any judgment or criticism. It can be easy for your partner to go ahead and step back and maybe not want to do this exercise. And the reason why is because he probably doesn't want to probe and pick a fight. I want you to be mindful of that. So I want you to share what it looks like for you. When we become overly aroused with all of these strong emotions, right? It tends to set off this chain reaction in our brain and our body. Okay? And so if that's happening for you already, then guess what? It's also going to happen for your partner. And so they're going to be nervous. They're going to be nervous with what this looks like. They're going to be nervous of giving you the wrong answers. And so, again, I'm asking you to be vulnerable. I'm asking you to let down your guard and have this conversation with them. Okay? And in turn, allow them to share what it's like for them. No judgment, no criticism, ladies. The passion is so low these days that I feel parenthood and other commitments are taking control. I want to feel like it's me he wants to spend time with. Yeah, I've said those exact words a hundred times to my friends after realizing that the man I said I do to wasn't the same person. Or was I just imagining it? But here's what I finally realized that changed things for me almost overnight. I started to use four simple and effective steps that changed our communication and connection for the better. As a licensed marriage and family therapist, I got excited and started showing my clients and they too were seeing changes instantly. Whether you've been married for one year or 15, these tips work and I can't wait to share them with you. Girl, I got you. I want to personally invite you to my live two hour online workshop. This is for moms who have said the empty promises just aggravate me so much He says he will do something or take care of something, then he doesn't. Communication has always been a weak point for us. He says things without thinking. I try to logically work through things and he reacts emotionally. I try to say what I feel in a constructive manner. He takes it personally and attacks me. Boundaries are a confusing topic for me because I am a helper. I have this innate need to help anyone I can. So if this is you, and you are ready to get off this hamster wheel, then allow me to guide you through this four-step process. I can't wait to meet you personally. So again, this is a two-hour live workshop. And for whatever reason, if you cannot attend, girl, I got you. This will be recorded, which means you will have lifetime access. This is for women only. If you are ready to go from roommates to lovers, Then let's go ahead and step outside of our comfort zones together. Allow me to guide you. If you're ready, what I'd like you to do is go to empoweredandunapologetic.com forward slash workshop. Again, that is empoweredandunapologetic.com forward slash workshop. Get ready, mama, because we are about to do some work. Now... When you talk about how to have arguments without hurting one another, it is very important to identify where you're at. 
So being able to identify what it looks like for you in flooding is part, it's part of the exercise. But then I also want you to look at what did your mom and dad teach you about the roles of a man and the roles of a woman? I know in my household, my dad's role was to work and then that's it. Maybe do some yard work, take out the trash. And you know what? My dad also taught me that men were also supposed to um, take care of their their wives by um, checking their cars before they left on long trips. I remember my dad did that. I was doing a, um, oh my gosh, I totally remember this. We were doing a girl's trip to Rosarito, Rosarito, Mexico. And girl's trip, I mean, I was like, turning 18. Was I turning 18? Yeah. I was turning 18 and we were going over there for spring break. And so I remember my dad checking my tires, checking my oil, but that's something that my dad did. And I want you guys right now, if you're not driving and you're not working out, I want you to close your eyes. What do you remember your dad teaching you? And some of the things might not be so great. My dad also taught me that he lost his shit whenever things didn't go his way. My dad also taught me how to be very aggressive with people and not be assertive. And he taught me that by his actions. So I want you to think about the things your dad did. What did he do? What did he teach you about the male role? You know, I remember my mom and dad would argue. And this wasn't every single day, but it was a good amount of time because, again, You know, like I mentioned earlier in earlier episodes, my dad struggled with addiction. My dad struggled with alcoholism as well as uh, heroin addiction. And so, yeah, my dad was easily triggered, easily frustrated, right? And so that's what I remember. I remember my dad teaching me that about the male role and whatever he says goes. And if he wanted to change his mind at any point, he would. As I was closing my eyes, I remember a time when we were on our way to Disneyland So we thought we were going to Disneyland. And I remember it was an exit right past Christianitos. I don't know what that exit is. It's on the five, it's headed five north. If you're from Cali, you know what I'm talking about. If you're from San Diego, LA area, you know where I'm talking about. But we were, you know, I'm from Oceanside. And so we were leaving Oceanside on our way to Disneyland. And we had just passed Christianitos on the five, headed five north. And I don't know... What exactly tipped my dad off? But I remember my dad got so pissed, so pissed. He was like, that's it. We're not going. And it's like, shit. Everybody was trying to stay quiet. Everybody was trying to just be good because we knew at any time if my dad wasn't feeling it, we would have to turn around. And sure enough, my dad turned around. He's like, nope, we're not going. We're not going to Disneyland. And we didn't go. So my dad taught me that at a moment's notice, it's the man that has the rules. Don't get me wrong, ladies. That's not what it looks like nowadays. But I had to do a lot of personal work in order for me to get to where I'm at today. And and so did my husband. So that's where I'm going. What were the roles of a man? And what was the role of a woman in your household? And how did you end up adopting those roles? For a woman... My mom ran the household, right? My mom ran like what we did, our doctor appointments. My mom would take us all the way to LA for auditions. We used to be in commercials and modeling back in the day. And yeah, we we would do that. And so my mom taught me like, you compromise yourself. You compromise yourself to meet the needs of the kids. You compromise yourself to meet the needs of the family. And so I learned that early on. My mom didn't really invest in herself. I would see her do everything for her, for us. And I just kind of watched that happen. And I watched my mom compromise herself. My mom really didn't do much for herself. Like she wasn't allowed to go on girls' dates, not at all. My dad would get very, very jealous. And so my mom was not allowed at all with like her sisters or anything like that. So growing up, I adopted those same things. Like you girls don't go out. Um, but Veronica, you just went on a girl's trip. Hell yeah, I went on a girl's trip. I went to Maui last month and guess what? We're going to do it again. But again, I had to do my own personal work. This is what I was taught. 
So I want you to think about what were women's roles in your household? What was the role of your mom? Like, what did she do? How did she compromise herself to meet the family's needs? I also remember my mom would not say anything. She would try not to poke the bear until she couldn't take it anymore. And then she would just let out all of her frustrations. So I watched that growing up. And so I want you to continue writing down what were the roles of the man? What were the roles of a woman? Guess what I'm going to ask you to do next. When you have a conversation with your partner, I want you to ask him the same question. The reason why I want you to ask him the same question is because I want you both to have a general understanding of how did you personally, this is where I'm going to ask you to hold yourself accountable. How did you personally adopt similar habits? How did your partner do the same thing? How has this impacted you and the way you argue? Aha, we're getting to it. We're getting to it. Now you're gonna gener- you're gonna come up with this general understanding of maybe why when you guys have arguments you go to hurt one another. Another thing you might be doing because of these roles that you've adopted from your childhood, you might find that what's holding you back from connecting with your partner is the fact that you weren't modeled this. And instead, you were modeled a way to prove yourself right, trying to go ahead and do what's different from what you learned from your mom and dad. But then going from one extreme, like with my mom and dad, my dad would just, whatever he said went, and my mom would hold things in and not say anything. And she she didn't go anywhere, right? She didn't go anywhere because she didn't want to poke the bear. And so I adopted those same patterns. And then I found myself saying, screw this, and then losing it, right? And then fighting to hurt fighting with daggers and literally criticizing my husband or being defensive because I had to prove him wrong. I had to prove him wrong and I had to prove all the reasons why I was right. What are the lies you tell yourself, ladies? Because I'm going to tell you right now, for me, those were one of the lies. I had to be right. And if I was wrong, well, then I'd get... I'd get the wrath or something would happen. And I was, I I hadn't dealt with my past pain yet. And so a lot of my past was showing up. I wasn't even aware of it. I was not aware of how my past pain was showing up. I was not aware of what to do next. And I was not aware of it because nobody had taught me. Nobody had taught me what to do. Nobody had taught me how to do it. And the reason why nobody taught me is because my parents didn't know themselves. And so I was just repeating what they did. That's all I was doing. And so because that's all I was doing, I was putting myself in a really, really compromising position. One that I don't want to do again. And so I'm going to ask you the same thing. How are you probably putting yourself in a compromising position? How are you shooting to kill with words? How is your past attributed to that? How is your past showing up? And so for this young lady that sent me this message, I understand when you talk to him, it leads to disagreements. But what I want you to do is I want you to take a step back. I want you to be able to identify what's happening to you personally when you're in flooding that's preventing you from like having a true conversation. What's preventing you from being able to connect? Don't get me wrong. He definitely has something to do with this too. But I'm looking at you because I def- I, I want you to develop an understanding of what's yours If I look at him, then all we're doing is we're playing the blame game and we go nowhere. That doesn't work. But instead, if I help you understand what the full picture looks like, well, then we're getting somewhere. There's movement because you can only control you. You can only control what you do and how you show up in the relationship. We cannot control others. And so if you're able to pinpoint how you're showing up, what it looks like when you're in flooding, what it looks like when you are overwhelmed with emotions. Well, then we could do something about it. We can't change your husband. 
We can't. But having these conversations, having these exchanges helps you develop with an, an understanding when you guys are both calm of what these arguments look like and why you guys take it so extreme. You'll be able to see that when your husband's in flooding, that's not for you to fix. Your husband is overwhelmed and he's in this fight or flight mode and he needs to calm down. So Veronica, what is the antidote when we're in flooding? Well, I'm so glad you asked. You require a 20 minute break because you're right now seeing red. You're right now at your highest trigger rate. Like right here, when you're completely dysregulated, when you're pissed, dysregulation means pissed and overwhelmed with emotions, right? But when you're dysregulated is just a a clinical term. But when you're in flooding, you can't see straight. You can't have healthy conversations. So you need to calm down. You'll come back to it. I promise you'll come back to it, but not when you're at level a thousand. Because no matter what you say, no matter what you do, it is not going to benefit your relationship. If anything, it is going to make matters worse. And so when you're in flooding, the antidote is to take a 20-minute break, not a 15-minute break, a 20-minute break. Step away from the argument. Allow yourself to calm down. Allow yourself to process what just happened. Because if you're able to process what just happened, then you're able to problem solve. You're able to be well suited to have a conversation without it overwhelming you. And if I'm taking it even further, what's happening for you, you're allowing fear to take over. And because you're allowing that fear to take over, you now positioned your partner as the enemy, not your husband. And that's not good. That's not good at all. Once we position our partner as the enemy, we've now completely, I shouldn't say completely, but for the most part, disconnected from them. And so I want you to have this conversation when you guys are both calm. I want you to be both curious. You're learning something new about your partner. I don't care if you've been married for 20 years, 10 years, one year, or if you're in a relationship where you're not necessarily married, but you guys are living together and you guys have been in that relationship for a good amount of time. Have these conversations. Yes, it's different. Yes, it's uncomfortable, but it is for damn sure necessary. You want to have a healthy relationship? Then you got to do something that forces you to step outside of the box. It forces you to step outside of the box. Remember, we want to reconnect with our partners. And in order to do that, we have to do something different. Otherwise, we stick with the same routine, expecting different results, and we get nowhere. And I'm here to tell you right now, right now, the more and more you expect different results and do nothing, you stay stagnant. You disconnect. Resentment is now growing. And that's the last thing we want. We don't want resentment to grow. We don't. We go nowhere. Okay? So instead, we do something different. Do not allow flooding to take over. Do not allow flooding to interfere with your ability to connect with your partner, with your ability to establish a strong relationship. Okay? If you want more, which I know you do, ladies, it is time. It is time for you to join my workshop. It is a live two-hour workshop. You, me, your notepad, your pen, notes galore. You and me are going to go through your relationship to help you reconnect with your husband. It is an online workshop, right? It is an online workshop to help you, for women only, to help you reconnect with your partner so you no longer feel like work, um, you, you don't feel like roommates. I can't tell you how many times I hear that. And if you're there right now, if you're feeling like roommates, it's okay, mama. I got the antidote for you. It's this two-hour workshop. You do not have to be married to be a part of this workshop. I'm going to be answering your questions in the last half hour. So it's going to be an hour and a half of you and me. I'm going to be teaching you. I'm going to give you examples. I'm going to pull from you. I'm going to pull from the audience. I'm going to ask you questions. We're going to do the whole thing because it's important that you're able to implement the skills that I teach you. The last half hour is going to be where you and I 
and everybody else that's on there, you guys are going to be, I'm going to be answering all of your questions. This workshop is scheduled for April 6th at 11 a.m. This is a live workshop that will be recorded. So if for any reason you cannot be on there live, don't worry about it. You'll be able to send me your questions and you'll be able to have lifetime access to this video. This is one that you are not going to want to miss. So definitely sign up for the workshop by going to empoweredandunapologetic.com forward slash workshop empowered and unapologetic.com forward slash workshop ladies this is limited seats and the reason why it's limited seats is because i want to make sure i answer everybody's questions and so you don't want anybody to take your seat in addition to that invite your friend invite your friend invite a familiar face i'm going to tell you right now with the pandemic, with everything that's gone on with our world, a good amount of us are struggling, especially in our relationships. So why not do something different? Again, a live workshop, you and me, let's do this. Many women lose their own identity in the shadow of being a mom and a wife. We are a community of women who support each other. We leave perfectionism behind to become empowered and unapologetic. I want to personally invite you to join our girl gang. It's a free Facebook community for women just like you. Go to www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash empowered and unapologetic. See you there. What's up, ladies? Just want to let you guys know that your ratings and reviews for this podcast are greatly appreciated. If you love this podcast, please go to iTunes right now, write a review, rate the episode, and subscribe. Don't forget to share it with your friends. Hey there. This is Casey McGuire Davidson, host of the Hello Someday podcast. I'm an ex-red wine girl turned life coach who helps busy women change their relationship with alcohol. I spent 20 years climbing the corporate ladder while drinking a bottle of wine a night to unwind. In the Hello Someday podcast, my goal is to teach you the tried and true secrets of creating and living a life you don't want to escape from. Each week, I'll bring you tools, lessons, and conversations to help you drink less and live more. I'll teach you how to navigate our drinking obsessed culture without a buzz and how to turn the decision to stop drinking from your worst case scenario to the best decision of your life. You can find new episodes of the Hello Someday podcast every Thursday, wherever you listen. And I hope you check it out. Addiction impacts all of us. Addiction's consequences run through all of us. From ourselves to our loved ones and through our communities, addiction creates so much loss and grief. My name is Dwayne Osterlin, and I'm the host of the Addicted Mind podcast, a show featuring personal stories, expert guests, and vital information about addiction and addiction recovery. We'll talk with leading treatment providers to discuss the latest research and treatment options for this devastating disease and advocate for mental health awareness. We discuss topics like the importance of creating a community of support to helping loved ones to some of the latest research on psychedelic medicines. The Addicted Mind podcast has been about creating hope, listening to stories of many amazing people that have overcome addiction and are thriving. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, subscribe to the Addicted Mind podcast wherever you get your podcasts or check out theaddictedmind.com. New episodes every Monday. See you there. Addiction impacts all of us. Addiction's consequences run through all of us. From ourselves to our loved ones and through our communities, addiction creates so much loss and grief. My name is Dwayne Osterlin, and I'm the host of the Addicted Mind podcast, a show featuring personal stories, expert guests, and vital information about addiction and addiction recovery. We'll talk with leading treatment providers to discuss the latest research and treatment options for this devastating disease and advocate for mental health awareness. We discuss topics like the importance of creating a community of support to helping loved ones to some of the latest research on psychedelic medicines. The Addicted Mind podcast has been about creating hope, listening to stories of many amazing people that have overcome addiction and are thriving. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, subscribe to the Addicted Mind podcast wherever you get your podcasts or check out theaddictedmind.com. New episodes every Monday. See you there. 
Hey there, this is Casey McGuire Davidson, host of the Hello Someday podcast. I'm an ex red wine girl turned life coach who helps busy women change their relationship with alcohol. I spent 20 years climbing the corporate ladder while drinking a bottle of wine a night to unwind. In the Hello Someday podcast, my goal is to teach you the tried and true secrets of creating and living a life you don't want to escape from. Each week, I'll bring you tools, lessons, and conversations to help you drink less and live more. I'll teach you how to navigate our drinking obsessed culture without a buzz and how to turn the decision to stop drinking from your worst case scenario to the best decision of your life. You can find new episodes of the Hello Someday podcast every Thursday, wherever you listen. And I hope you check it out. I know. I know we've been taught that motherhood requires alcohol. I know we've been taught not to question our relationship with alcohol until we've lost everything. And I know we've been taught that if we do dare to examine our relationship with alcohol, we need to head straight to AA and declare ourselves an alcoholic who is powerless to alcohol forever. But what if all that isn't true? That's definitely not my story. I'm Suzanne, the host of the Sober Mom Life podcast. I'm an influencer who stopped drinking in January 2020 and since then, I've been telling the truth about motherhood, influencing, alcohol, and sobriety. If you suspect deep down that glass or three of wine at night might just be making motherhood harder, well, you're right. Come and join me as I chat with other sober and sober curious moms. Let's laugh, cry, and normalize sobriety together, all while we reheat our coffee for the fourth time today. <laughs> 